With the beautiful Puget Sound just to our west, you get a look inside CenturyLink Field here in Seattle. This crowd, as we've come to expect in recent years, as loud as any in the NFL, and they get even louder when their Seahawks are introduced. We're ready for football as the Seahawks get set to do battle. And a nice return sets them up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Back out now come the 1-0 Seattle Seahawks as they beat the Falcons in Week 1, Charles. 38-25, that game was in Atlanta. Russell Wilson continuing to play at the top of his game. Only had four incompletions, 31 to 35 over 300 yards four touchdown passes no picks and guess what he also led the team in rushing and then he flew the flight back home to seattle <laughs> is there anything that was left that he didn't do in this game i mean it was unbelievable jamal adams was a force on defense remember the big trade that brought him over Maybe the next game, Russell Wilson will play safety next to it, just to go ahead and do a few extra things. A phenomenal job by him, phenomenal job by Seattle. And for me, it really fit. Remember the fourth and five when they went for it? And he threw the ball to DK Metcalf for a touchdown. This Seattle Seahawks team, they're very confident, strong, and they got a huge game in week two. Their home opener on a Sunday night, Cam Newton and the Patriots are coming to town. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On third down, Carson. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave them with a fourth down. Third and two, and they ran the ball for only one yard, and everybody's going to scream at the offense. Let's give a lot of credit to the defense on that play. Defensive front out leveraged the offensive line. They got more people to the football. Yeah, they won that battle in a big way, and they're forcing a big decision now by the guys on offense. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And the Pats will be backed up deep to get the drive started as they take over first and 10. Back out, here comes the New England Patriots on the offensive side. And a week one victory for them, 21 to 11 over Miami, a division win. You know, 2019, of course, that brought an end to the Patriots era with one MVP QB. 2020, they begin a new one with another MVP signal caller in Cam Newton. And plenty of questions about him on the Patriots, but we're starting to see some answers because hey, did you ever think, uh, definitely not with Tom Brady there, you would say that a quarterback would lead the Patriots in rushing in a game, but that's what Cam did, 75 yards on 15 carries in that opener against Miami. Yeah, not only that, you have a New England team who's lost a lot of top players on defense, yet they held Miami in check the entire ball game. So you put Cam Newton on offense, big change there. A lot of defensive stars not there anymore, yet the guys who filled in played well for them. A vintage New England team, just when you think you've got them, they look like they've got you. How about the schedule, though? Going to Seattle, home against the Las Vegas Raiders, and then they go to Kansas City. Things are going to be interesting watching the Patriots in the early going. Open man is Asiasi, the tight end. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That'll be a New England first down, a gain of 12. First down. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. They will run with White out of the shotgun. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Ball carrier. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. At the 31-yard line. They stay on the ground. This time it's Michelle. They get 11 back on that one. It leads.
yards to third down. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. They'll try and run for it. Here's Michelle. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist to the referee, and that means fourth down. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. And the punt team on now as this one set away. 39-yard punt, six yards on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and ten. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Yeah, let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That, too. <laughs> a solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Three yards to go on second down, and they've got three tight ends out there. Jumbo set. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Chris Carson has proven to be a workhorse for the Seattle Seahawks, and they continue to expand his game. We know that he can run inside and be a bruising type of a player, but he has surprising speed to the perimeter, and they've expanded his game now by throwing it to him out of the backfield. In 2019, in the top 10 in the league in touches and yards from scrimmage. It's a six yard pickup and it gets him to second and four. A quick burst there and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Second and four at the 45 yard line. The last run got six, now second and four. Now a give, right side. It's Carson. He'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. So now a third and seven. And defensively, it's a dime look. Six DBs. From the gun, it's Wilson. That's complete into the hands of Carson. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. First and ten. That was just a good example of taking what the defense gave him. No one opened downfield, knew where his safety valve was, swung it out to him. He gets upfield and picks up the first down. Well done all the way around. From midfield now, here's Wilson. They'll run the screen with Carson. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. Got to give some credit there defensively. They snuffed out that screen early on first down. Really read it well, didn't they? Because they didn't bring the pressure that they expected. They covered all the passing lanes. So once you see a breakdown as the passer, I think in this situation, you're throwing it at the feet of your back to make sure no one picks it off, or you throw it away, throw it over the sideline. Don't try and freelance and try and make a bigger play. There's really no one else running a pattern that should be open. Makes it. Greg Olson was a big time pickup for the Seattle Seahawks in the offseason. Spent the last nine seasons with Carolina as an all pro, Pro Bowl tight end, and did the same thing before that with the Chicago Bears. Now he moves to the Northwest and gives Russell Wilson a big-time target in the middle of the field. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. 
When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. Patriots take over first and So back onto the field come the Pats for their second drive and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. On first and ten, Newton. He's got White here. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. First down. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs. Oh, well, the ball is out. Michelle lost it. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. The fumble on first down now. Here's second down. And now a throw here secured by his running back out of the backfield. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back, and it could turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. Throwing on third down, Newton. That's complete to White. Yeah, boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Well, it wasn't a big strike, but that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here? You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. A call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return, and possession will switch hands first and 10. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 23. He'll set up to throw from the gun. And they've got the hookup. This is Olsen. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. First Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The intended receiver was DK Metcalf, but it'll be second down. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Here's second and ten. To throw again. Wilson, he finds his man, the tight end Olsen. Five yards, now it's third and five. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. The last play on the completion got him half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. No score after one on EA Sports. No score. The Seahawks on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. Throwing again here, Wilson. Here's Carson with a catch out of the backfield. And this one goes nowhere. 
Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. A three yard loss That's a nice the clip and save sequence it's there defensively down. because they did everything as they would have wanted to. They forced the third down, blanketed the field with coverage, Michael nowhere Dixon to go with the football, the forced the dump off to the back, and even then they closed quickly and got him down behind the line of scrimmage. You name it, they did it well in that last sequence. And this one goes angling out of bounds and it will be spotted inside the 30 yard line. So the Patriots coming out now. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Here's Sanu on the catch. Seven yards to pick up there. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man, because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. On the handoff, it's Michelle. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Sonny Michelle comes out of a long line of terrific running backs from the University of Georgia and was a first-round selection for New England in 2018. He does not mind carrying the football, never turns down an opportunity. Top 10 in rushing attempts in the league in 2019. Now Newton on first down. He'll fight his tight end here, Asi Asi. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. And the Patriots. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius, understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball, and puts it right out there for the nice pickup. Just beating the play clock is Newton. Caught by Sanu. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Well, that certainly has to feel good. And it's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And he'll go down here at the 12 yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. On second down now. It's white. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. Jaron Reed on the tackle. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. New England on third down. Just one for three thus far. This time it's third and three. From the gun, here's Newton. Just what Seattle was hoping for. The coverage holds, and now fourth down. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. And no signs of the field goal unit. They're going for it on fourth down. They're running it. It's Michelle, and he will not even make it back to the line of scrimmage. Sony Michelle won't get there, and the Seahawks are going to take over the football. A chance to get some momentum here in the second quarter, getting their first trip into the red zone, but unable to get it across. And if I'm the head coach, sure, you feel some disappointment, maybe a little bit of deflation there because you didn't get it in, but I'm going straight to rah-rah mode. All right, guys, we didn't get it this time. It's only the second quarter. We'll be back. Let's get it later on. I want to keep this team up. I want them to feel like they've let everyone down. Positive. Got to be positive in this situation. It's too early to think that you don't have a chance to win this game. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive. 12 yards. Now that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. Right. 
They'll run on first down. Carson, and he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. This defense is really flowing around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. Ball at the 24 and a second and 11. From the shotgun, Wilson. The rushing numbers for Wilson may be down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. Well, that was man coverage. So once he decides to run with the football, there's no one to account for him, and he turns it into a nice game. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They'll try the left side. It's Carson. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. He's tackled at the 40-yard line. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And this is going to be incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. So a couple of first downs on this drive, but it's looking like another empty possession. And those empty possessions are certainly starting to pile up. So the adjustments that teams talk about all the time have to be taking place. They've got to analyze what's breaking down and figure a way to fix it. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. New England trying to get to place on offense. And on the last drive, they were in field goal range. They just opted not to kick it, didn't get it. How does that change the mentality this go around? I don't think it changes much for the head coach because this is what he preaches all the time. Attack at all times in any spot on the field. And he likes touchdowns, not field goals. Now, your field goal kicker, you've got to make sure you nurse him through and say, OK, don't worry about it. When we need you, you've got to be ready to go. And the team, of course, loves to see points on the board. So let's see if it changes a little bit in the same spot again. Yeah, we'll see what the decision is here if they get to that spot. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. From the gun, they run with Michelle. And once again, not much running room, if any at all. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still ten to go on third down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and ten. Out of the gun, Newton. And that will be incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage. And just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. The Patriots send out their punter as he's on here to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. Officially, it's a one yard loss that's going to bring up second and 11. Yard line. Second and 11 now. 
From the gun, Wilson. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Carson. Wilson's pass. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll lead here to a third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And the throw there going to be incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Results. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Fighting throw. That'll go as a punt of 42, seven on the return. And the Patriots take over. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space, and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game, and that three and out on the last possession, that told you just how stalled they are on offense. So who will step up here? We'll see. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. From the 29. Newton, and he's got Edelman for the first time. That's complete, and they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 15 yards on the play, first down. First down. And there's a nice catch there by Julian Edelman, and he's going to be a reliable target no matter who's playing quarterback. Topped 1,000 yards receiving for the third time last season. I just love his story. College quarterback to one of the top slot receivers in the NFL. And he'll just plow right into a host of tacklers. Nothing there at all, and it'll be second and ten. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Here's Newton. That's caught over the middle by Asiasi. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. A shotgun snap for Newton. He's got Sanu. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 27-yard line. Well, they were in search of a short gain on third down, and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards. On first down, Newton. Catch is made by Harry. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. On first down, it's Newton. A fight for the football, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Quandre Diggs. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. All right, CD, I want to fit in your preseason predictions. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jonathan Jones. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Patriot defense has a touchdown. That was a nice catch, and not by the guy you thought it was going to be. How about the defender turning into an offensive player as soon as the ball hits his hands, and off he goes, off to the races, and into the end zone. Extra point forthcoming. And he 
he gets it to make it 7-0 Patriots. Makes the score Patriots 7, Seahawks nothing. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Seahawks take back over. Inside of a minute left in the half, does the fact that you're down on the scoreboard influence what you do or, I guess, don't do on this final drive? It certainly does, but what influences me even more is who I've got running my football team out on the field and the weapons around him. Can he make a play? Can he get into someone that we're going to trust to take care of the ball? If that's the case, I might push it a little bit here and try and get something before the half runs out. He'll find Metcalf. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Options galore here, second and a few inches. From the gun, it's Wilson. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. They'll run the screen with Carson. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. Throw on first down with Wilson. Sliding out of the pocket. He's going to take off with it. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 and a first. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Now here's Jason Myers. He gets set for the Seahawks field goal. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. And Myers able to knock it through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half.
Jason. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Now Bolden on the return. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. New England trying to get into place on offense. Time for a final kneel down or a safe run, and then they can head to the locker room with a lead. Yeah, or they can even run a screen. You know, something they feel is somewhat safe that might actually pop and turn into a big play, that's what you usually run in this situation. Or go four verticals because why not? Because you're feeling it, right? <laughs> you're just feeling it. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. So we've reached intermission here in a low-scoring game. 7-3 is our score. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports Halftime Report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. So the halftime break behind us, and we are back underway with a third quarter of action. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. Now comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done they're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. Show them one thing, hit them with something else. 30-yard line. Ahead of the chains now, second and two. Operating from the gun. Newton eluding the pressure right. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Newton able to use those legs and get past the marker to pick up the first. That's something we have not seen him do to this point, and that's take the ball, tuck it, and run. Exactly right. His first carry of the game, I guess he picked a good time to do it. He certainly did. Not only did he have the element of surprise, he's making sure he's judicious in taking off. First down, here's White. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. In on the stop, the Pro Bowl strong safety, Jamal Adams. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There's absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. They'll try the air now with Newton. Being chased out left. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. On third down, Michelle. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. It's a gain of nine. First down, New England. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. That one good for 13 at a New England first down. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, Newton. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Throwing again. Newton. Oh, what a catch by Edelman. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Five yards, now it's third and five. What a catch, and one-handed, and I'm starting to lose my awe about the play, and maybe I shouldn't. How much of this is the player? 
How much of it is the glove? Well, those gloves, they do have a little grip to them. They got a little extra tackiness to them now, and I know the guys in the NFL, the competition committee, some other places, they're talking about examining those gloves to see if they're having too much of an effect on the game. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. And they'll continue to look for more catches like that from Nikhil Harry. He was New England's first pick in the 2019 draft. Had a disappointing rookie season, though. Only 12 catches for 105 yards and just two touchdowns. With his talent and his potential, this team needs him to step up. That's complete right around the eight. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. It's a gain of five. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Now second and five. Snap will come from the six. They'll run with Michelle, and he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. A six-yard touchdown run, and the Patriots add six to their lead. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally... The haymaker to put that drive away. 14. Extra point splits the uprights, and that pushes the lead up to 11. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. And able to get this out to the 25. Now we'll see what this Seahawks offense has in store with their first possession of the second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper. And they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. They're on the stop. There with a the tackle, Dietrich Wise Jr. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal... Get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. He'll run it. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Sometimes guys get locked into such a groove. What do we call it? The game slowing down. They see everything happening almost in slow motion. They see the lanes develop. I feel like he's right there. Well, and you want this from your leader, right? With this deficit, this stage of the game, second half, no quit in him. Zero. The Philip Dorsett holds it in. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. One thing about the Seattle Seahawks offense, they are a run-first group, but when they throw the ball, they want to throw it downfield and sting defenses, and Philip Dorsett provides great speed and a good target downfield in order to get that done. Nice catch there. His speed adds an extra dimension to the Seahawks offense. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Back-to-back -back nice gains, that one for 14 yards and another first. Good gain by Chris Carson, picks up a first down, and you just have to love his running style. Talk about a straight-ahead guy, no-nonsense type of a runner. He's averaged 82 yards a game over the last two seasons and had 1,230 yards on the ground in 2019. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. 
He was brought down. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. On second down, it's Carson. And he's going to take this down close to the first as he's brought down at the Patriots 24. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. That's complete into the hands of Carson. Wilson's pass. Call it a gain of five. And that'll make this a second down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL. Being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. On second down now. It's Carson. He'll get forward for three down to the 16-yard line. The tackle. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. It's a pickup of six. First down, Seattle. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through and picking up first downs. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and ten from the ten. On first down, Wilson. This will be caught at about the six. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Seahawks from ten yards out. And the Seahawks have made this a one-score game. The tight end position has always been dangerous, especially in the red zone, short field. But now even more so because these tight ends aren't necessarily the tight ends of old. They're the rocked-up wide receivers who have a little bit more speed, way harder to cover than before. And he'll get into the end zone as the two-point conversion is successful. the touchdown. Here's Myers to boot it away. Now Bolden on the return. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Patriots offense now. They work their way back onto the field. Their lead down to a field goal now as they start with a first and 10. Cam going to bring the Patriots up now, first and 10 at their own 23. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. And on the connection, this is Ryan Izzo, complete. Newton's pass. A gain of six there on first. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Four yards remain for second down. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. Looking for Edelman, and he hits him. It's complete. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. The former seventh-round pick, Julian Edelman, just continues to have such a productive career. 
and has made himself into a receiver. Remember, he was a college quarterback and not just a productive one, a very good one. At Kent State, right? Yes, a great leader, a guy who could make plays with his feet and his arm. Got to the NFL and had to convert into being a receiver and was drafted that way. And that conversion, oh boy, it's been good. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Open man is Asiasi, the tight end. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. New England. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. Throwing again is Newton. It's complete. James White. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. On second down, Michelle. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means it might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll run out of the gun with Michelle. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. He was taken down. I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And it's Michelle once again. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Now he'll escape to his right, and he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. To throw again on second down. Newton, it's caught. This is White. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. First and it's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. 
Trying to pound it in here with Michelle. And a nice pick up there. He gets about five down to the four-yard line. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. Michelle going to try again. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action, throw the ball. I say commit. That'll be caught. It's Sanu for the Patriot touchdown. 14, Mohamed Sanu. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Makes the score Patriots 21, Seahawks 11. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. From the six. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 26. He'll drop to throw. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Dietrich Wise Jr. in there to get him. It's a loss of five. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. Wilson after the play fake to Carson. This one into the hands of Metcalf. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. He's going to take off with it. He's got a first down and much more inside the 20. And finally, taken down at the 15. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but... It's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. 
So much for the best laid plans and best designed plays. That was good coverage along the sidelines. No place for that one to get in there. It sails incomplete. Second and 10. This is Carson. And he's going to get it inside the 10 to the seven yard line. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Third and two, now Wilson. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss on one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot, and he misfires. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. He definitely wants that one back. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Myers kick is good and this is back down to a seven point game all right so they needed two scores to get back in the game the field goal there maybe not exactly what they wanted but the necessary first step there's still time remaining and there's enough time to get it done they've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back preferably a takeaway This will make it into the end zone. And no return for Bolden. It's a touchback, and out it comes to the 25-yard line. New England trotting into place on offense. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. Newton and the Patriots with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Out of the gun, he'll throw. That's complete to White. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four, second down. A gain of four. It's now second and six. And they'll work from the 29 on second and six. Out of the gun, Newton. And this one brought in by Sanu. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 12 yards there and a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. Now a first down carry, it's Michelle. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Michelle, the ball oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So after three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Again, it's Michelle. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. The good run on first down followed up by a not so good run on second down. Now let's find out if they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Well, they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't get a stop there, gave up another first down. They have all three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you've got to start thinking about using them here. 
I was just going to ask you at what point you think now's the go time? I think now's the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really put you in a stressful spot. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Second and 10, Newton again. Caught by Sanu. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 31-yard line. 16 yards, a first down. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. On first down, Newton. He's got a man complete. It's Julian Edelman. And he'll wind up getting about six out of that as that's going to lead us to the two-minute warning. Working with a second and four. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. A play fake to Michelle. Now Newton going for it all. And this is caught. And that could seal it. It's a touchdown. touchdown. Well, that was absolutely ideal for them, wasn't it? Trying to salt this game away. I think one of my kids just graduated in the amount of time they had the football. That was absolutely impressive. Everybody wants those salt-away-the-game drives. What makes them successful? Well, when you're able to mix run-pass, when you're able to control the football and stay ahead of the chains, I'm using every cliche I know, but that's how you get it done because you're not taking negative plays, and that way you're able to run what you want to run when you get a chance to call it. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. So Russell Wilson in the offense. Down by two touchdowns. A little under a minute 50 remaining. Field goals useless at this point. They need two touchdowns, and they need them in short order. First and ten, it's Wilson. Complete to Dorsen. And the ball is knocked out, and the Patriots have it. Wilson's pass complete. And they'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And barring mistakes, they should be able to kneel this one out and finish it off. And there's only one timeout remaining on the defensive side of the ball, so that doesn't really come into play either. Ball at the 33, second and nine. That's 
They'll keep it on the ground. Michelle, and only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. They need to get this to the 24 on third down. From the gun, here's Newton. He's got Sanu. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Give him 15 yards on that one, and New England has a first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Newton's going to throw it. This will be caught just inside the 10. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Tonight's overtime here out west, and you got a team from the Eastern Time Zone. Maybe their body clock's a little thrown off, or is that overhyped? I don't think it's overhyped, and, and I think that for most teams, you're hoping that your mind overrules your body because your body's looking for slippers and, and, and bedtime clothes, right? <laughs> They're looking for the pajamas. But in this case, you've got to stay with it mentally. And what a lot of teams do, they never change their watches. They always say on East Coast time and just go ahead that way to try and defeat any of the effects of moving to the west. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say good night from Seattle.